M&Ms are tiny, chocolatey gems that simply melt in your mouth. It's no surprise that kids and even adults are so crazy about them. What's not to love? A chewy chocolate center plane with peanut butter or nuts nestled inside and a hard, colorful, shiny sugar coating to give it a nice crunch. It makes for a perfect combo. But have you ever wondered how M&Ms are made? Well, it's your lucky day, because today, we'll take a trip to the M&M Wonderland and learn how M&Ms are made. M&Ms originated in the U.S. in 1941, when Forrest Mars Sr. and another associate got the brilliant idea to make candied chocolates. However, Mars was not the first to think of this revolutionary chocolate idea. He actually got the concept from Smarties, which he had encountered during the Spanish Civil War that lasted from 1936 to 1939. At the time, the sugar coating on the chocolate made it possible to carry it in warm climates without the risk of it melting. That's where the company's clever slogan originates from, the milk chocolate that melts in your mouth, not in your hand. The m and m ms naturally comes from the first initial of the last names, Mr. Forrest Mars and his associate. Once the M&M's factory began operations in 1941, the candies became an instant hit. The biggest customers at the time were the army because it was convenient to carry the chocolate without it melting. By 1954, the company introduced peanut M&M's, although it was only available in the tan color. This was followed by almond M&M's, which were introduced in 1988, and mint chocolate M&M's, which were introduced in 1989. Now that we know a little bit about the history of M&M's, let's take a look at the ingredients used in making them. At the heart of every M&M candy is chocolate, so the most important ingredient is chocolate. The chocolate used in making M&M's is a unique blend of whole milk, cocoa butter, sugar, and chocolate liqueur, giving it a perfect combination of rich flavors and creamy textures. The chocolate liqueur is a thick syrup made from ground cocoa beans, Roasted cocoa nibs go through a process called broyage, during which they're crushed by a grinder made of revolving granite blocks. The crushed cocoa nibs then go through further processing before they're fully transformed into chocolate liqueur. The cocoa used in making the chocolate liqueur is, of course, of the highest quality. It's usually sourced from Ghana, the Ivory Coast, and Indonesia, with strict quality control measures ensuring the chocolate is excellent. Then we have sugar. M&Ms are sweetened with a combination of granulated sugar for that extra sweetness and corn syrup, which gives the candy its soft and chewy texture. The sugar is also sourced from the highest quality plantations and rigorously tested to ensure it's free from contaminants. And now, for the vibrant colored coating of the M&Ms, we have food dyes mixed in a liquid coating for the final touch that leaves the M&Ms glossy, smooth, and colorful. The colors range from bright reds and greens to cool teals and purples. When all these ingredients are combined, M&M's flavor scientists work tirelessly to create the perfect balance of each ingredient and flavor, so the candies are not only delightful to the mouth, but also a joy to look at. Now that we know the ingredients used in making M&M's, let's dive into the production process. M&M's are made in a large factory, rigorously cleaned and sanitized to meet health standards. In these factories, every step of the production process is carefully controlled and monitored. Next, the liquid chocolate is poured into tiny spherical molds to create the chocolate center for the candies. For peanut M&Ms, a peanut is placed at the center of the mold and the chocolate is poured into the mold to cover it up. The same applies to almond M&Ms. For peanut butter M&Ms, the peanut butter center is made first and left to harden before being covered in chocolate. When all the M&M chocolate molds have been made, they're sent to a tumbler that makes the chocolate center smooth and rounded. Then they're left under controlled temperatures to harden. When the chocolate centers are hard, a conveyor belt transfers them to the coating area. This is where the chocolates get coated in sugar coating, which we all love, in a process called panning. Panning involves rotating the chocolate in large containers as liquid candy made of sugar and corn syrup is sprayed onto them. It usually takes several coats for each chocolate to be fully covered. Each coat is sprayed on the rotating chocolate at timed intervals, which allows the previous coat to dry, leaving an even layer, a shell of dry candy. For the last coat, 
The different signature M&M's colors are added to a finishing syrup and sprayed on the chocolates. They're then left to dry into the hardened shell. When all the chocolates have been thoroughly coated, they appear glossy, smooth, and hard. The candies are ready for consumption now, but they wouldn't be M&M's without the signature M&M branding. So each single colored batch is transported via a conveyor belt to a machine that stamps the M on the shells. Here's a fun fact. The little M imprinted on the candies were not always white. In 1950, the company imprinted a black M on the candies to give them a unique trademark. It wasn't until 1954 that the white print was adopted, which is still used today. This works by placing each candy in an indentation on the machine. The candy runs under rubber etch rollers that gently touch each candy to imprint the M on it. The machine is specially designed to imprint the M without cracking the thin candy shell. Because of this, some of the candies may not get properly imprinted. However, the absence of the M on the candy does not make it a reject or any less of an M&M, &M, so it still makes it to the final stage. Interestingly, the etching machine can process approximately 2.6 million M&Ms per hour. But even more mind-blowing is the fact that 100 million individual M&Ms can be manufactured per day. The last stage is the packaging. M&Ms are not packaged like regular chocolates, and that's because M&Ms are not your regular chocolates. So, special proportions by color are taken into account when packaging M&Ms. For plain M&Ms, we have 30% brown, 20% yellow, 20% red, 20% blue, 10% green, and 10% orange. For peanut M&Ms, we have 20% brown, 20% yellow, 20% red, 20% blue, 10% green, and 10% orange. Regardless of the flavor, though, an average M&Ms bag contains about 56 M&Ms. When the proportions for each packet are set, a packaging machine weighs the candies, pours the proper amount into individual bags, and heat seals the package. Finally, the finished packages are moved along a conveyor belt to a machine that fills pre-assembled shipping cartons with the appropriate number of M&M's packages. At every stage of the production process, M&M's must undergo rigorous quality control testing. A critical aspect of this is physical appearance testing. After the single color M&Ms are combined, the pieces are inspected manually to ensure there are no misshapen ones. The M&Ms also go through taste tests, which involve a taster sampling a few M&Ms from each batch to ensure they have a uniform approved taste. The M&Ms must have a precise level of crunchiness and sweetness to meet quality control standards. Another test the M&Ms must go through is the drop test. The drop test involves using a machine to drop the candies from a height of several feet onto a hard surface. The candies are then inspected for cracks or chips, which could indicate a problem with the coating process. The candies are also tested for their probable shelf life. This includes testing for how the candies will hold up under different conditions, such as changes in temperature or humidity, which can all determine how long the candies will remain fresh and delicious for. M&Ms have evolved over the years as the companies experimented with different eye-catching colors and mouth-watering flavors. Their sheer delightfulness has earned them a place in pop culture, as children and adults alike can indulge in M&Ms and share with their friends and family. And with that, we've come to the end of the M&Ms production process. So now you know the amount of care and detail that goes into producing each M&M candy that dissolves in your mouth. But hey, What's your favorite M&M's flavor? Let us know in the comments. Also, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this channel for more content like this.